Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Making It Personal is provided by Sarah Vocations Ministry. Learn more at joinserra.org. Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. I'm Jean Till, and on today's show, we're visiting with Marianne Daly and Dan Kinsella, parishioners at St. Patrick and Imogene, both instrumentally involved in the recent Eucharistic procession and the impact, the focus of divine renovation that has had on their team and their parish and this procession. Really looking forward to being with Mary Ann and Dan, uh, familiar persons to us here, but uh, great friends of, uh, I think, uh, some of the things that we're doing in the diocese. In the latter portion of June, we were able to roll out the last two sessions, launch sessions for parish leadership with our strategic visioning, uh, trying to, again, sow seeds of God's spirit and cultivate connections in Christ through encounter, friendship, and communion. And the great experience of communion that we had in those great couple of days in the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage, across the bridge, Archbishop Lucas handing on the Blessed Sacrament, mm. and the many who had gathered for Mass in Riverview Park, uh, we're obviously concerned and our prayers continue for any who have been impacted by the flooding of the waters that came down from Dakota and obviously left their mark, uh, still kind of taking toll on uh, any kind of devastation that happened with that. But I think the solidarity of spirit and the beautiful moments that we had at each of the sites, Corpus Christi, uh, Holy Rosary in Glenwood, and then uh, Imogene St. Patrick and concluding at St. Mary in, in uh, Shenandoah. And all, obviously they all, the, the background, the volunteers and uh, the, the missionaries who were there, including uh, Father Innocent uh, Montgomery, uh, I think really brought the spirit. Well, you know, each one is like a peak moment. And then we, you know, they're going on elsewhere, but uh, we're left <laughs> with the, the deluge of, of mm. grace that God has given us in this marvelous way. And so, so maybe let's bring them on here already. That's fine. I'm Marian Daly, good to have you today. And Dan Kinsella, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Pleasure and honor. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So, you know, in the events at Imogene, St. Patrick, which uh, kind of the holy hour on a, on a Monday evening, and then there was obviously all night adoration. But outside, there was a, a good uh, atmosphere of, of celebration and just enjoying presence with each other. And oh, yeah, throw in an Irish band, a few fireworks too, and, and uh, both, uh, you know, junior and adult beverages to go with that as well. But uh, just in the procession afterwards, any lingering thoughts for you or memories that have just really struck out? I think you're probably trying absorb it. Yeah, you're right. Just trying to take it all in that we were really part of such an amazing event. I mean, for me personally, just the gathering, the community of so many Catholics, and we were just all there just celebrating Jesus. Like, I, I can't articulate that as well as I want to, but my heart is just full. And that this just happened right here for us, right in our own parish. Like it's, it's pretty overwhelming. It's pretty overwhelming. Yeah, I I think wow is <laughs> is my response to to the entire experience and wow from from my soul. It was incredible. Mm. We're very grateful for the opportunity. So to our to our our national church to Bishop for you for for our our pastor Father Lazarus. Thank you for allowing us and guiding us to this opportunity to express our faith in a very outward manner. And we need to do this more often. That, that's my reaction. I thought, this is just incredible. And on the way home last night in the wee hours of the morning, uh, really having the thought that, boy, I, we pray for those that don't know Jesus, because what an experience this has been to have Jesus in this way in our community. So we're, we're super grateful and, and really on a high and that high I think is going to last all the way into the Congress in Indianapolis and, and then forevermore. Amen. And so we've whetted our listeners' appetites and uh, we hope they'll come back with us. After. Yep. Stay tuned. We'll return and be visiting with Mary Ann Daly and Dan Kinsella, parishioners at St. Patrick and Imogene, both instrumentally involved in the re recent Eucharistic procession and also we'll be talking about the impact of divine renovation and it has on them and their parishes. You're making it, you're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Spirit Catholic Radio Network.
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from independent realtor Chris Foster. Chris has served clients with everything real estate throughout Iowa since 2019. 641-891-8178 or online at the number 4 saleia.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Fitness by Design, your neighborhood fitness studio. Located in Des Moines, offering PH or fitness classes, private and semi-private training, beamer, and massage. Learn more at fitnessbydesigndm.com, 515-770-3844. At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at Intervisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. And on today's show, we're visiting with Marianne Daly and Dan Kinsella, both of whom are parishioners at St. Patrick's in Imogene. And we're going to be talking about the recent Eucharistic procession that went through their community and also about divine renovation and how that has had an impact on them and their parish. And before we forget, we also want to acknowledge the St. Sarah Club and all that they do to yes. promote vocations to religious life and the priesthood. Uh, I think they were a little beaming a little bit as we had the priesthood ordination of now Father Louise Cabrera and Father Michael Mahoney at the cathedral on the 21st of, of uh, June. But uh, we look for many more uh, seeds of vocation, vocations that were sown maybe mm-hmm. in some of these uh, uh, graceful events here that show us that to be Catholic is to be very much a part of something larger than ourselves. Uh, the launch of our strategic visioning and the varying pieces of that, we'll devote other shows to that and hopefully get some podcasts going. But I think it dovetails very well with all that we're about in talking about divine renovation, creating a culture of welcome and care in our parish communities, inviting people to encounter with Jesus Christ, accompanying our youth in discipleship, engaging our young adults in full participation, preparing disciples for the domestic church, and communicating our message boldly and clearly. And so I think this is not just something dropping out of the sky from nowhere, certainly not from my uh, you know special private revelation, but this has been something very organic that's been growing. And parishes like uh, St. Patrick and Imogene, Marianne and Dan have been part of something much greater here. And so we'd like to just kind of say where, you know, this whole divine renovation, you know, it's... Not quite copyrighted, but Father James Mallon is, is certainly even uh, uh, the proponent of this, the spokesperson. Mary Ann, what's your thoughts? Yeah, you bet. So Divine Renovation, um, we started it in our parish uh, probably about two years ago and went to the conference and brought back those ideas. Like the, uh, the three- conference in Dallas, Texas, where you know, probably 25, 30 people from Des Moines, right? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and it was just filled on um, thousands of people. And it was a great opportunity to visit with other people and other parishes. Like what is divine renovation? What is this movement? Because we weren't familiar with it. So, um, when we left that conference, um, we also read Father Mallon's book, Divine Renovation, moving from maintenance to mission. And many members of our parish read that book, our parish leaders. And it was, I mean, I'm just going to call it, it was a game changer for our parish. I mean, we just, we took those principles and we made them uniquely St. Patrick's and developed three um, areas of focus that we have really just been really zeroing in on. And we are seeing the, the, the fruits of all that. Um, and our three areas of focus. Maria, just to take a pulse, you know, that people were open to investing themselves the time and to, to reading and reflecting on a book, having conversations with each other. Was it a sense of, well, we got to do something here? Or was there a little bit of anxiety fueling this? Or was it just that openness that, you know? I feel like it was the openness. I really do feel like people were just waiting for something like this. You know, everybody... Um, once we explained this wasn't anything new, right? We weren't going to like change the culture of our parish. We have a fantastic parish, but it was just simply, what what can we do better? And, you know, the, the big takeaway from divine renovation is, is obviously for us, you know, putting Jesus in the center of everything that we do. 
right? That was our focus on all of this. And when we did bring it up to everybody, everybody was very receptive. And again, it wasn't like we changed the culture. We just kind of gradually added some different things into our parish life. And it has been amazing. It's been amazing. Okay. So, but maybe the, the needle on the culture nudged a little bit that we're not just, you know, yeah, hey, we're great. We're great. Because the spirit discomforts us at times and says, you know, is there more that God is calling us as Catholics to, to bring Jesus, to announce Jesus to others? Dan, when did you become aware of this? And, and how have you kind of seen yourself and maybe your role both within the parish, but also the diocese? Too? Yeah, it's it's been a, a blessed journey to be a part of it. And some of the opportunities that I've had to be on Various boards have given me some perspective on approaches that have been taken across our world, quite frankly, and across our country and across our diocese that have had different results. And so we were thinking through, hey, what makes sense for us? How do we become the best version of ourselves? How do we try to get us and everyone around us to heaven? And and the fact that what got us here may not get us there and being open to that and being willing to explore and I think that this this opportunity has really allowed us to to think that through. Also to to understand kind of Marianne to what you said, to focus on what are our strengths? What are we good at? And and how do we use that in a way that, that can really make sure that, that we're getting outside of our four walls, that we're spreading those strengths with others. And I think this Eucharistic procession that we just had, oh wow. What, a, what an opportunity for us to experience our, our faith in a way that really is an expression to the world of our love for Jesus. And you know what strikes me, Dan and Marianne, as you're talking, this isn't the pastor talking <laughs> about getting people to heaven. These are lay people that are excited Indeed. and passionate about what your role, what your individual role is. And to me, that's what divine renovation just struck me is that we have a calling and it's not to be ordained and we can't put this all on our pastor. Yes. Yes. Yet we have a pastor who is so much there with us every day and his love, his passion comes through. And it's been something to your point that you just made that then People just do the right things. People are connected to others. They're there loving each other, supporting each other for, for the, the biggest challenges. We had a parishioner that had her husband pass away this week to the, the biggest high on the mountaintop, to literally the, you know, the hair on the back of your neck standing up because the spirit is flowing through you. Those, that is divine renovation and connecting through each other with God and with each other to, to achieve things. Maybe you didn't even think were possible, right? And evangelization is a big part of it. And I think one of the things that we have found out is, you know, there was a question that, that came to me yesterday to say, how hard was it to put this event on? And my reaction was, you know, we're actually pretty good at this, <laughs> you know, and I think it's somewhat similar when we think about asking someone to join us for, an event or for mass or for meal and to talk about God. I think that first time, maybe it's, it's, a, it's, it can be difficult or uncomfortable and Bishop, you alluded to it. And sometimes the spirit pushes us to be in those uncomfortable places and, and it's okay. But I think the, the more we get used to being in that discomfort, the more that we embrace the fact that this is something I should be doing. And you know what? I can actually improve at it and I can get better and inviting and really being with others in the spirit of God and in all aspects of our life. You mentioned the pastor, Father Lazarus Carigia, you know, from Kenya, but uh, our priest of our diocese of Des Moines, but uh, yes. so a missionary already, in fact, but that's a little bit what we're talking about here. You know, the kind of uh, mantra almost of divine marriage from, from maintenance to mission, but that that's not, you know, going elsewhere, but within our own, you know, 
ter, you know, culture, our own ter, territory that we're about. And so whether that's our workplace, whether it's the fields that we plow, uh, the ways in which we shop and move around and hang out with other people, you know, and that that's where, you know, there's an, an appointed moment that the spirit gives us where we can invite and we can call and we can tear or we're finding our peace, our joy and our strength. Amen. And Bishop, you know, one of the most simple things that we did in Imogene is a small community. We really hadn't gone out to the folks in Imogene that lived there and talked to them. And, and we, we had uh, two events where we went out and took some cookies and had some material that talked about when we have our, our different events and services and just had a conversation. What a small but incredibly impactful experience. All the conversations that I was in were very positive. People were, were welcoming. They wanted, they invited you in their home. They, they really connected with this as a part of community. And that's something, gosh, I thought we hadn't done that before. Shame on us. Right. But just again, being open to pit bull growling at the door yeah. for you <laughs> or not, you know, you know, <laughs> we left all those for some. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> you brought your Irish center. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You had, oh, that's uh, so beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so doors opened maybe. And, Maybe, uh, Marianne, you've alluded to in one of the video presentations that you've been part of that, you know, some people are finding their way to, to be with you for worship. Right, they really are. And as Dan said, I mean, it's so important that we went out to our community, but it was also that we were more welcoming within our own community. You know, so many of our people, you know, you sit in the same pew every week and you know, hi, Sally. But do you really know, Sally, what is she going through something? How can we be better at helping one another um, experience some of the some things that they're going through if they they need somebody. So that was something else that we wanted to do. We just wanted to be more welcoming and, and build stronger relationships with within our parish. So it was definitely it was twofold going out and about, but then just really showing God's love to the person sitting next to us in the pew. You know, so both of those. Well, that really important. me partly, you know, even in the introduction to our strategic vision that uh, I tried to compose, you know, that that phrase, you know, what does love of neighbor consist of from Simone Weil is asking them, what are they going through? Where are they going? Jean, how's it going with your surgery? <laughs> yeah, you know, your shoulder replacement. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't push my luck. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, it's great, Bishop. It's yeah. going great. <laughs> Good. Uh, other things that maybe, and this wasn't necessarily by committee, but just people who then were inspired to propose some things. What would be some other things to, to kind of round out the menu? A couple of the other things. I mean, and just a quick overview, too. I mean, we really broke it down into just three areas, right? We just tried to make it pretty simple. And our areas of focus over the last two years have been hospitality, which is the welcoming part, Right. Everybody, and one simple thing that I love to share with people is we simply now have greeters at our front door for Mass. Okay, nothing doesn't cost anything, but it's been really well received that no matter who you are, you've been coming there for years or you're a visitor, you're going to get a warm, friendly hello. And that, that's so important. Um, Dan already spoke about outreach. So our outreach in the community, we needed to get out and about. We need people in Southwest Iowa to see that people that, that go to St. Pat's, we're, we're good people, right? We, we, we love God. We love one another. And so we just want to get out and, and let people see that and just don't stay in Imogene in our beautiful church, but get out, you know, and remind people that, as you said, Bishop, even in your daily life, when you're working, you know, you, you always need to think that, you know, people are looking at you. And if you're filled with joy and happiness and kindness, you want to know why is she like that? You, you know what I mean? So I think that's been just kind of making people aware of that has been huge. And then um, something else that we haven't talked about is we really focused on our mass experience for everybody. You know, our mass is a beautiful thing that we get to experience, but you know, how can we maybe just change some of it so that it's a beautiful experience for everybody? So we just added a a welcome note at the beginning of Mass, right? To say, so we greet them when they come in the door, but we also say, welcome to St. Patrick's, you know, right when we sit down. So just some simple things like that, just to, to help 
And the, so those are our three real focus areas and just simple things. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, I, I even committed the kind of the fault of I listed our six priorities in strategic visioning. We're not asking everybody to do a big gulp and take on all of these at the same time. Be discerning. What, what are one, two, Matt, max, three of these areas? And I think you are already ahead of us on that, you know, and kind of, you know, embodying that spirit and, of discernment and good counsel that we're, we're be part of this, um, you know, people who've come back or people who you know had an experience that you know now they they're more part of the the week in week out experience. You know, is it younger people or the people who maybe shared that they have some pain that the, they felt the church was not there for them, or you know, you become agents of healing in some way. The the spirit is flowing because I think it's all of the above, Bishop. We we've had we have some younger folks that have come to join that were curious and, and have made some relationships with, with some folks in the church. We, we've had some folks that have, that have left and come back. Uh, we have others that have been celebrating Jesus and other faiths that, that have found um, Catholicism and, and really been open to exploring. But I think in each of those instances, um, it comes back to a personal invitation and ask, and a welcoming when you when they do come to think, boy, this is um, this feels good. It feels special, and this is something that can give me hope and love and in in my life in that you know world where it's you know the world is challenged. Where am I going to find um, mental stability or all? You know, it's in Jesus, right? Through through an experience with others, and so we we've had. Uh, really a variety of successes in um, bringing and, and identifying individuals. And then also, and I think something is the ability to connect them with an opportunity to stay engaged in, in effectively giving them a job, you know, however small that may be. Good job. Good job. We'll get it. Well, that's another good yeah. note. <laughs> well, my job is to say, stay with us as we return. We'll con- consider it. Continue our conversation with Mary Ann Daly and Dan Kinsella, parishioners of St. Patrick and Imogene, as we took talk about the divine renovation that is happening at their parish and in their own hearts. You're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Spirit Catholic Radio Network. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarah strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsara.org, join S-E-R-R-A.org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. And just to um, that feisty exchange on my part about your shoulder, oh. you know, very much praying for you. I don't know if it was lifting all those plates at the restaurant in Fort Dodge. I think it was. Girl, you know, I think it was carrying a guitar for 40 some years on my shoulders at mass. Okay. It, literally, I started when I was 14 and I quit when I was 60. 40 years so. of guitar player. Well, that's going to be a show unto itself. But uh, <laughs> uh, Dan, you kind of left us with a sense of, you know, kind of inviting people to take on jobs, you know, and uh, did you get into any kind of turf wars with any of this? And how did that unfold? Yeah, it, it sounds a little funny, but to be honest, one of the best experiences that we've had on this journey is through the use of a survey and focus group discussions with everyone, literally all of our parishioners, even visitors, to understand how would you like to engage? What do you think we should be doing as a parish? How could it be appealing to you, to your family, to your future? And really listening to that and that exchange then and allowing them to connect with their passion and their strength 
to our mission and what we want to get done has been very powerful, a fantastic experience. And again, I think it, it makes it very personal for each individual to spend time on something that's really important to them. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, Maria, please. Yeah, and, and when we talked about that survey, which was wonderful, and then what we also did you, was it on your own, or did you borrow from things that people had done? Over there? Yes, a little of both. I mean, it was a little of both. Let's be honest, you know. So, but but it was short and sweet. Maybe eleven questions. So it was, and we just had people rate them you know, one to five. But I think what we did is once we reviewed all that data, all that information, and then we took action. Okay, so we so that people knew this wasn't just a survey that. Yeah, they don't right. care. Right. So an example, like adult faith formation, people were craving it. So what did we do? We, we started Alpha. And now this fall, we're going to be doing Journey of Faith. So we then took action. So I think that showed our parish that, and oh, they listened. Who's going to know what Alpha is? Could you give us a thumbnail on that? Well, so we're throwing out these divine innovation and Alpha. Yeah. Do they go together? So they don't really go together. Alpha is just, I mean, it was just led by lay people. Father's not there. And it's just really, it's not a Bible study. It's just videos that we watch. Um, and then we discuss um, these videos, all, all faith-based. And it's just a great opportunity for, um, and, it, and it's for everybody in the parish and even outside of the parish, just to experience and share their, their love of Jesus. And so that was really, um, it was a really big deal in our in our parish and we just started it but people really loved it because it wasn't a bible study where people felt maybe a little intimidated it was very much just we're you know we all kind of have our doubts and and you know on our different journeys our our path and we just you just spend that time sharing about that so and that more was in a home setting than in a churchy setting more right. often mm -hmm. yep okay. so yeah it's been great i know you pulled in some really great speakers you know yeah you know, kind of uh, you know more than you expect to come by uh, imaging or something you know but uh, that's that's wonderful it's not off the beaten path but so even for people who might not be involved in this particular opportunity this communication dan is something yeah. that's very key yeah. yeah you know definitely when you're going through change it's it can be uncomfortable for both the individual receiving the change and maybe the, the individual or individuals that are communicating the changes, one of the biggest, I think, successes that we've had and, and perhaps recommendations to others is be open in that communication. If there is something that's going to change and somebody says, hey, make sure you don't touch this. If you have to, if, for whatever reason, if the parish says, hey, we need to go this way, make sure you tell them why. You tell them with love and you tell them, hey, this is our journey. It's not my journey. This is not the committee's journey. This is our journey and, and provide that feedback and you communicate with us to make sure that, again, we create the best possible future together. Oh, beautiful. Well, you know, I know we've kind of shown a light on you and we're doing so again today. Uh, you know, but uh, that willingness to go, as Pope Francis says, out into the peripheries, which might not be geographical or something, but just, you know, where are areas that are untouched? And of course, we didn't get to, but uh, also being willing to let go of maybe some things, which is mm -hmm. a harder part as well. Uh, Marianne and Dan, thank you so much for what you gave us today and look forward to continuing this procession together to whatever God has in store in the Diocese of Des Moines. Amen. The best is yet to come. And you're always welcome to visit us at the Hub of the Universe in Virginia. <laughs> the hub of the universe. Okay, we got it. This has been another edition of Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. Thank you to our guests and to all of our listeners in Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, or wherever you may be listening on Iowa Catholic Radio Network and the Spirit Catholic Radio Network. You can hear Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson every week on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Making It Personal is provided by Sarah Vocations Ministry. Learn more at joinserra.org.